Hi everybody and welcome to tonight's Thursday night live session. Tonight we're going to be joined by the Department of Civil Engineering and Construction and the Head of Department Anne Bonner. Later in the session we're going to be joined by Anthony McElwee and Anthony's going to spotlight our programs in construction, our Level 8 and our new Level 7. So let's introduce Anne Bonner and Anne you're very welcome to tonight's Hi, session. Fiona. Thank you very much so, for inviting me on. Great to have you back again. Um, you are a pro at this stage when it comes to going live with us, Anne, uh, after last week's part-time and postgraduate mm. events, and now we're focusing on CAO programmes. Um, so this evening, we're going to be focusing on civil engineering, quantity surveying, fire safety engineering, and also construction management with Anthony. And also we're going to look at architectural technology. Now, we're going to start with an area that you know really well. You're a civil engineer. Um, I suppose that's where you started off your own career. Yep. Uh, but we're going to talk about LYIT's Level 7 and Civil Engineering Programme. So can you talk me through the programme, Anne? Yeah. Well, I suppose civil engineering is probably the engineering discipline that people are most familiar with, and particularly in Donegal, I suppose you associate it with local authority and water, wastewater, all of the things that go on to support our infrastructure. So everything it's everything to do with buildings, everything to do with servicing of buildings, roads, bridges, canals, waterways, all of that, piers, all of that comes into civil engineering. So it's quite a broad discipline. And what we have here is a three year ordinary degree, level seven in civil engineering. So the students come in, they do a broad range of engineering disciplines or engineering uh, modules and then it's very much hands on. They do a lot of practical classes, whether it's in materials and soils and land surveying and water, wastewater. And they also do computerized structures, drawing, things like mm -hmm. that. Right. So they get a good grounding in civil engineering and basically after which they can go out, get a job and work. Some of them, particularly mature students, would be happy to say, right, that's the end of my studies. I'm not going any further and they'd get a job or get a better job than what they had before. But younger students, I suppose, are all keen to get their honours degree. So typically from here, a lot of them would consider going to Scotland and doing a one year add on in Scotland uh, to get an honours degree or maybe a two year add on elsewhere. It just depends on where they want to go and what they want to do. Yeah. So this program is a three year level seven program. Yeah. There is yeah. the top up option across a number of our own level eights in house at LYT for anybody watching and the CAO code is yeah. LY527. So if anybody was filling out their CAOs, it's in the level six, seven of your um, six, seven section of your CAO. Mm -hmm. The program and is it accredited? Because um, that's important. Yeah. Well, it's a level seven BEng program, so it's accredited as associate engineer uh, with Engineers Ireland, which is the accreditation that you get for an ordinary degree. Yeah. OK. And in terms of then graduate careers, where would a civil engineer end up? Well, I suppose, as I said, in Donegal, a lot would end up uh, with the local authorities, say with county council, whether in roads or water or planning or other aspects, you, a lot of the time to uh, civil engineers would end up working for structural engineers like say mm -hmm. you know local structural engineers which are small companies or maybe on a larger scale multinational engineer or multinational companies where they could be construction or site managers as well as civil engineers it depends as well on what area you want to go into and what you want to specialize in yeah but it's quite broad in terms of i suppose opportunities yeah. too at the same time yeah. and then again that option to top up if you did top up in another area say at lyt like fire or across construction mm -hmm. there are multiple avenues then for you in terms of careers yeah it's certainly so and at of, the moment at the moment yeah. like there just are not enough people studying mm -hmm. civil engineering it's the same nearly for all of these disciplines as you know fiona yeah I mean, if we filled all our courses and if all the other universities and colleges did the same thing there still wouldn't be enough people to yeah. cater for the plans that are coming down the tracks basically and that's in relation to I suppose national strategic plans but then also we see yeah. locally within our own region issues with regards mica and all these different things coming yeah. down on the track so it's careers and construction yeah there's a lot of potential even within our own country let alone going abroad mm -hmm. um another area and i want to change change up in terms of subject areas is fire safety engineering um now what's really unique is um and you can correct me if i'm wrong on this is that we're the only institution north or south in ireland higher education institution that offers a level eight honors degree in fire safety engineering yeah that's right yeah, so yeah. we're the only ones doing undergraduate 
from the CAO, like doing fire safety yeah. engineering, there are a couple of postgraduate courses and there's a part time level seven elsewhere, but that's about it, really. And this is yeah. a niche area that we have basically made our own over the last 20 years. So we've got a lot of connections with fire safety engineers throughout Ireland, the UK and other parts of the world as well. And mm -hmm. this year we're actually running a fire safety engineering degree online at night as well. And oh, wow. there's huge interest in it, you know. Yeah. And again, yeah, so what we have for school, yeah, for school leavers, we have a four year ab initio BNG mm -hmm. honors fire safety engineering. So the first two years, um, it covers an awful lot of the general construction areas like construction technology, building services, site organization, all of that sort of thing. And then the second or the last two years, then it's very much a focus on fire safety, engineering, uh, design and principles, legislations, management, all of that. Yeah, and our facilities are incredible at LYIT, like our fire lab. And, yeah, we um, have. So it's quite in terms of, I suppose, anybody watching this evening that was interested in having a look around the facilities, the facilities across your entire department are exceptional and they can book, anybody can book a campus tour, a one to one with either myself or Victoria um, on the LYIT website um, and you can click any time now while you're making your decisions um, in terms of that campus tour. So graduate careers in fire safety engineering, what are the opportunities? Yeah, well, it's actually a career that you can move up quite quickly in because when the students leave us, they have a BSc honours or a BNG honours in fire safety engineering, whether they've done the one year add on to civil or another programme or whether they've done the BNG mm -hmm. ab initio. So basically, they're very much sought after. I have companies coming, looking every year to come here, talk to the students and try and get them to join their firms, basically. So, um, I suppose like what I say to them is for the first few years anyway, to go off and get experience, go elsewhere, go work for the bigger company, see how you get on, see how you like it. And maybe a lot of them then come back and work more locally here. There's quite a few set up with links in the collab or with using the office spaces in the collab or locally as well. Yeah, so, and the collab yeah, for anybody watching. Plus, plus if you think every... Are yeah go ahead Fiona. the collab is our innovation center for anybody so it's based on campus at lyit yeah. so for anybody watching maybe who's wondering where yeah. that is based it's actually based on the campus at lyit yeah. and i suppose what people don't realize is that all of the public sectors like whether it's the hse or the prison service or the police service or uh, Gardaí or you know all of the different sectors the prison service they all have fire engineers well they would have a fire engineer basically looking after their um facilities wow you know so and there are a lot of it... jobs that arise out of it and then accreditation again and across fire what way yeah, is accreditation well, the bn genres the ab initial four-year program is we're very lucky really in that we have full accreditation with engineers ireland for that so basically it meets the standard needed uh for an honors degree with a view to going on to getting chartership. To get chartered now, you need an MEng and experience, but the starting point is your honours degree and the uh, BNG honours fire, the four-year ab initio has full accreditation with Engineers Ireland. I think it's one of the few uh, honours fire, say, it's one of the few honours engineering courses in the country that doesn't have an honours maths entry requirement, because basically we have proved that the maths that we do throughout the four years brings the students up to the level that they would be at had they come in with honours maths and progressed straight through. Yeah, and again, it's a four year level eight unique program for anybody watching yeah. um, program that's standalone, the only of its kind in Ireland. There are master's opportunities elsewhere. And for anybody wanting to find out more information on that, they can visit again our website, lyit.ie for more information. We're moving in then to a program that is actually available as a level seven and a level eight on both the CAO choices. So it's quantity surveying. This program yeah. offers a work placement opportunity, um, which is a full year run isn't that right yeah so basically what we have is we call it our active learning year right so we have a full year's work placement in the third year and that applies for both the quantity surveying and the architectural technology so basically the students are here for two years and then they get a work placement and they go out on work placement for a full year and while they're out there they are still completing some assignments and modules so it's a bit like the online learning that everybody's familiar with so you still have some deadlines to meet and you still have some assignments to do while you're out on placement you do a diary where you log on 
what you're learning at work every day for a certain number of hours and so on. So, um, yeah, it's very popular and it works well. It means the students go out, they get to know a company, the company gets to know them very well throughout the year. And the company obviously invests a lot of time into working with the students over the year. So it's in their interest to make sure that they get good experience because they're looking to keep them on or to bring them back when they graduate a year later. Yeah, we recently spoke with some of the grads from the program when we were doing our videos um, yeah. for Quantity Surveying and we spoke with Ellen Kemp and Ellen was outlining that her placement really brought together the modules over the first two years by going out in the yeah. placement. It kind of made everything align and that placement mm -hmm. is also paid. Um, so yeah. that's important to highlight as well in terms of the internship. That's a big draw. Yeah, and a lot of the students try to keep on the work part time when they're back mm -hmm. and forth here, maybe a day a week or whatever, or during holiday time or whatever to keep it on, um, keep the link with the company going until they graduate. And then it's accredited as well, but by yeah, it's accredited by, by the Society Chartered Surveyors yeah. of Ireland. Yeah. So and it basically means then, you can travel anywhere with it with the qualification. Yeah. So you can, yeah. and you can also you can do a placement abroad. Is that correct? Yeah, well, typically the students who would have do our placements abroad, maybe our international students or students that have a link with abroad. But we did last year have one student who was doing his placement in the UK and the company sent him to Germany. So he ended up doing wow. his placement in Germany. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good now in terms of opportunities. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to highlight, I suppose, just relating back to the last fire safety engineering program, there's really great team there as well. And your team across the full construction um, department and civil engineering department, that it's it's people coming from industry. So the academic staff that are, are teaching, that are the educators across all of your programs have either are still working in the industry or have companies or have come yeah. from vast experience and I know for instance Rory McShane Rory McShane I think it was around the Grenfell Tower disaster was the the key contact for the likes of RTE radio and um no one nationally and internationally yeah. for for that so that's a big draw as well in terms of the teams yeah well I suppose it's not a very widely known discipline fire safety engineers not as big as other disciplines so it is they do tend to all know each other and mm -hmm. as i said we have plenty of contacts because we've been sending graduates yeah. out for 20 years so every office they go to there's somebody there from lyit you know yeah that's amazing and in terms now yeah. um, of the next level eight that we offer it's a new program it actually was a level seven previously and then it became it kind of reformed as um, a level eight four year honors degree in architectural technology yeah. so explain architectural technology because it's a question that comes up a lot in the schools what is an architectural technologist and what would you cover in this program yeah it is a question. People tend to think they know what an architect is, but they don't know what an architectural technologist is. And I suppose architectural technology does focus on what it says, which is the technology of a building and putting a building together. So the architectural technology students would look at the detail of uh, putting together a building. They do a lot of their work on computer. They use software, AutoCAD. Uh, to a certain extent, but mainly now it's 3D software, 3D Revit. And everybody, if you see the programs that are on TV at the moment, you can see augmented reality and virtual reality goggles that's coming into it because the software now is that good that you can do walkthroughs of a uh, building before it's uh, built at all, just from the drawings and so on. So the technology has really come on. So you can imagine architecture as a discipline can't like an architect cannot be expert in all of, in all fields. So they can't be expert in say 3D modeling. They can't be expert in energy efficiency. The, you know, they can't be expert in the different aspects that are needed. So the architectural technologist basically is the technical person or the technology behind that. And they uh, become quite expert in the different facets that are needed to put a building together. I know so that we have we, taken school a number of times in and to yeah. the lab, the architectural technology room, and you see that progression of project work by from first year mm. right the way up to, to fourth yeah. year. Um, and it's it's incredible. It's live projects that the students in architectural technology are often working on. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, the course is organized quite differently in that they have their own studios, which are for the large part, for the most part, dedicated to the 
mm -hmm. students. So the students basically have their own desk, have their own drawing facilities and computer and everything that they can come and go to throughout the week. So the idea is that if they don't have classes, they're free to work away there on their projects in their own studio, because it's important that they work together as well. So they share the room, they share the facilities. And uh, why we made it a four year course, then we brought it up to honours degree by mm -hmm. putting in the placement year, like what we have in quantity surveying. So with the placement year, it means they're going out working in architectural offices in Donegal mainly um, for the mm -hmm. number of years that we've been doing it. And they get great experience and they really come on. When students come back from placement, they sort of look at what they were doing before they went out and what they can do now. And they said, there's no comparison, you know. So yeah, it and is good. learning, the learning yeah. on the go and learning on the job mm -hmm. in terms of vast experience for them. Um, so in terms of then the program, it's in terms of architecture technology, where is it accredited from? Well, at the moment now, the accreditation we have for it is from the Chartered Institute of Architectural Technologists in the UK, because they have a register for architectural technology and that you can become a registered or professional architectural technologist through CIT, Chartered Institute of Architectural Technologists in the UK. We don't actually have a register in Ireland, so you can't actually become chartered through an Irish profession as such. So mm -hmm. we are using the Chartered Institute of Architectural Technologists in the UK. and. When we work with a professional body, it means they give us a lot of support and that, you know, typically a professional body would give an award for the best student at the end, end of the year or the best graduate. And sometimes they give bursaries as well to help students financially. And we've been lucky in that we've got one of those for this year and last year as well for an architectural technology student. So we get a lot of support from the professional bodies as well. And you don't have to have particular subjects at Leave Insert either for this programme. That's something to, to highlight, you know, um, in terms of entry requirements. Yeah, well, I think the only uh, entry requirement that we have throughout is basically general maths entry requirement for all mm -hmm. of the courses in the department. Um, but after that, students come with different subjects. Some have, have very few have done physics. Typically, students might have construction technology or drawing or some aspect of construction. But if they haven't, it's OK. You know, every module starts from the beginning so they can catch up and maybe spend less time on stuff that they did at school or stuff that they were good at mm -hmm. at school and more time on the new stuff. Yeah, so and there are supports. After a while. And there are supports at LYIT yeah. across the department yeah. um, for anybody who maybe is struggling with maths or is mm -hmm. struggling with that area in terms of our um, student support centre, the curve as well. And um, I'm going to now um, give you a break and I'm going to okay, introduce yeah. Anthony and we're going to move yeah. now and talk about all things construction. So Anthony, you're really mm -hmm. welcome to your first um, live session with us. Um, and tonight you're going to be spotlighting the programs, the level eight in construction um, management, and also then the new level seven <coughs> program in construction that has a common entry option that lets you try a little bit of construction management, architecture technology in terms of specialisms, you pick one. Um, so we we'll start with the level eight. First of all, you you are a graduate of LYIT. I am indeed. Yeah, long time ago. <laughs> Too long to talk about. No, just say three or four years, Anthony. And that's the last oh, time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say three or four, then that's it. Yeah, three or four. So you're back now and you're in the education space uh, yourself now as a lecturer. But you yourself yeah. had been working in the construction industry. Yes, yeah. So just um just fresh out of the cold face, as I say, up to take a new mm -hmm. challenge here. So um yeah so just uh fresh out of um working in you know a variety of a variety of different uh industries you know the last one was was information technology you know was building data centers for you know well-known established companies such as you know facebook and uh you know things like that and i've worked in you know the oil and gas and commercial sectors prior to that in different regions of, of the globe there so it's uh it's been a good good career so far now and you know getting the, the good education the way really really pushed that on for me yeah and i think anne highlighted that, that i suppose ability to travel anywhere um in the world with that construction program because there's so many opportunities in terms of employment now if, if someone was looking at the four-year level eight or the uh, the three-year level seven program what would they expect to be covering in terms of modules um in the programs in that kind of first few years of coming into the construction area at lyt yeah, when, well, when you start and and uh, I think either there and uh, first year, you know, it's really about looking at the fundamentals of uh, you know what you need. Really get everything level playing field, 
Um, some people might have done different subjects in the leave insert. Um, so when they come into this course, um, you know, it's about making sure that everybody understands the fundamentals and the basics that are needed uh, for that platform to help elevate you from there. So, you know, it really looks at, uh, you know, first year, especially you come in, you look at, you know, construction technology, you know, taking taking a house and from day one, all the different elements of construction that they are involved with that. And, you know, as you progress through the years, you know, that level, um, you know, becomes slightly more difficult. But, you know, the, again, that basis is, is building upon each year there. Um, like I mentioned, there's a bit of physics and math. Um, you know, there's some architectural projects involved with, um, some land surveying and, you know, building services. And, you know, a lot of focus on construction management and the principles, uh, you know, for really what, what drives uh, that career path after. So, uh, like I said, it's really about coming in and learning the fundamentals at the start and, you know, having them abilities and skills that you need, you know, not just to finish your career, uh, education, but to move on then into your career and, and really, have that uh, level playing field and basis to a platform to, to build upon. Yeah, and I think, I suppose, highlighting that people are coming um, from different backgrounds. Maybe some may have done the likes of construction, but some may not at leaving certificate level. And they're coming in, I suppose, creating that level playing field allows then yeah. everybody to progress at the same, um, I suppose, level. Yeah, exactly. Look, it's, you know, it's uh, people come from different, uh, different educations, different backgrounds, and, you know, it's about giving it the same equal opportunity to be able to, 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 uh, to educate and, and work through the degree. You know, it's, it's an important and part of it. I suppose, why would someone choose these programs? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's that's a million dollar question, isn't it? Um, yeah. I suppose <laughs> the, um, you know, if you look at, I know myself when I was doing the leave insert, you know, I was unsure of, of what I wanted to do. Thankfully, I picked the right uh, path, but a lot of times information can be hard to come by. You know, you, you're not unsure of the right questions to ask. And, you know, especially with uh, the pandemic over the last few years, obviously, um, information was, was face to face was very hard to come by. So um, the beauty of this course now it comes in and gives you that flexibility. You know, you've got, you start off on a broad range, learn the fundamentals, and then after the, the period of time, you know, you can branch into something more specific then after that, and you know, it allows you that time to, to understand what that preference is and, you know, where you want your career, your career and education to go from that point. And there's a work placement as well in construction management. Um, is there yes. one in the level seven or is it just the level eight? That's in both there. It's there in the it's third both, year. Really yeah, short, that's uh, amazing. Work placement. Yeah, and it's and a again, good option. That connection, connection with industry, like it's a big draw. Yeah, like it's, you know, the, the students are they're encouraged, you know, to, to go on a construction site and just to see what, you know, what happens on a day-to-day -day basis, similar to what we talked about in year one, learning the fundamentals, what happens, you know, it's, it's the same principle going out into a, into a professional industry and onto a construction site and seeing how that team dynamic works and, you know, gives you an opportunity to create context, see that theory that you're learning actually turn into reality and into practical and, you know, prepare for, for your life after your studies. And, you know, through that, that whole placement, you know, the, the department's there for, for any support or anything they can give to the students in any way as well. And then the level seven, so the level eight is construction management, standalone program, four year ab initio. And then the level seven program is that common entry, but people then get to decide, is it after first year, they get to decide whether to go and go down the construction with construction management specialism or construction with the architectural technology specialism. Is it, isn't that after what year one? Uh, yeah, that might be a question for Anne, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I'm not so sure on that one, but uh, yeah, like uh, you get that that um, that opportunity, you know, and at that stage you, you've got the fundamentals in all them areas to be able to to see what your preference is at that point. Yeah. So if you were standing in now with a leaving cert class group and they were asking you, so why would you encourage someone to join these programs? What would you say? Um, you know, like. Uh, I look at myself in my career um, and, you know, when I look at this course and it's about teaching people about construction, but also, you know, about how to manage people and manage projects and so on. And, um, you know, like I said, I'm fresh out of the industry and my last project was in the Arctic Circle in Sweden. Um, wow. Building the data center for Facebook. So it was, you know, it's a, an exciting job and an exciting industry and location, something that's, you know, you don't get the opportunity to do in every industry. And, and for me, going out into into them projects and you know you're managing um you know uh, hundreds of people anyway and, and millions of euros worth of projects you know the course really provides a platform to allow you to do that and in terms of the prospects like my um, phone doesn't stop emails don't stop still there's lots of opportunities out there and there's uh, even 
um, you know, not just in Ireland, but like I said, globally, Europe, you know, there's even Irish companies working in the UAE and Qatar and things like that, uh, that if you decide to go that way. And directors from companies like Anne said earlier on, there, there's people calling her all the time, you know, I'm getting uh, from past employment, getting contacted for, for new grads and things like that. So the opportunities are there. And again, the course really provides them fundamentals. Um, so if you want to, it depends what you want to do, if you want to work as an engineer or move on to your into management, um, you know, managing projects, contracts, you know, and up the ladder you want to go, you know, that, that course really provides that. But it also, you know, like we talked about giving you that, that reach globally. Um, me personally, I started my career in Canada. Um, having the degree actually got me the temporary work permit to get there, but also my residency to be able to stay there. And, you know, you're mm -hmm. identified as a, a vital worker for the country. So it's more than just a, than just a piece of paper. So the, the opportunities are endless, you know, wherever in the world you want to go and the exciting industries that you want to do. And of course, um, there's money in it as well, which is the most important yeah. thing. So, you know, it's, it's definitely something I'd recommend to, to anybody considering out there. So you've you've highlighted earning potential, travel <laughs> opportunities to see the world. The fact that you were working um, in the Arctic Circle on a data center built that is incredible. Yeah, well, in was minus thirty outside. I wasn't saying the same thing, but uh, <laughs> that was uh, it was uh, it was a good opportunity, enjoyable. Yeah, makes it only all weather look good, so it does. Um, well, you so wonder times. You'd wonder, well, less rain, maybe a little bit more cold. <laughs> um, so, Anthony, thanks so much for joining us. We're going to take you back on in a second, but we're going to have you Anne are. back on with us now because we're just going to, I suppose, wrap up um, in terms of um, tonight's session before we go into our Q&A. But I suppose as a head of department, Anne, of civil engineering and construction, I suppose what makes your department and your program stand out for somebody who maybe is considering their options in this area? Yeah, well, I suppose, you know, the kind of feel that you get from what I've been talking about, what Anthony's been talking about is how we all work together because we have to, because that's how it is in the real world. So basically all of these disciplines have to work together and there's an awful lot of overlap as well between the different courses. So coming out, everybody should be very well aware of what all of the other players in the construction or in the engineering fields do and how to work with other people because teamwork and group work and all that soft skills is what people are looking for employers are looking for now they want people who basically are well grounded in the technical aspects the practical aspects but at the same time can lead on from that can do management modules can work with people and are basically badly needed in the discipline you know yeah and in terms of i suppose um the question that i often be asked when in terms of schools context do you need yeah. to be exceptional at maths to come into a, a program in civil engineering and constructions department? No, you definitely don't. You know, as I said, as I generally say, you know, if people really like maths, I think you're better off doing the engineering courses like the BN, just where you'll have maths every semester as you go through it, if that's your strength and that's what you like to do. But other people much prefer to take a route that doesn't involve an awful lot of maths and you know for the mathematical aspects even if you are on an engineering uh, route there's an awful lot of support there and the students find that support we have as you know the curve that gives math support mm -hmm. to students the students are very good at accessing that and accessing um help as they need it you know to make sure that they get on okay and that they progress through but it's taken in very small steps so that basically you're never overwhelmed by it you're always leading mm -hmm. on from one stage to the next so you don't move on to the next stage until you can manage that you know so yeah. that's how it is so walk before you can run in terms yeah, of the yeah, department you know, just, um just and one thing one thing I want to ask you Anne, now is about, I suppose, exploring new areas. Is there anything you, coming on track in terms of whether it's undergraduate for that leaving Sarah cohort or postgrad part time um, within the department? Yeah, well, I suppose, I mean, we're always developing new courses and stuff like, mm -hmm. you know, the fire engineering app in a show. And then after that, the construction management and then Recently, we had the common entry for construction management and architectural technology. So really, from my point of view, what I would like to see being offered in the short term, hopefully as soon as possible, is an honours degree in building engineering with renewable energy. Because again, it's an area that hardly any college does that, hardly any of the other um, universities now offer what was called building services and 
now mm -hmm. is better known as building engineering, I suppose. We've always had a building services course here, mm -hmm. um, but that basically course is running out now. And what we're hoping to start it up again with an ab initio four year honours degree or maybe something like what we did for construction is that we would have a common entry in engineering so that you could pick building services or you could pick fire engineering. So that's yeah. what I would like to be able to offer soon. But sure, time will tell. Well, we'll see how time it goes. Will t time will tell. Yeah. And in terms of, because I suppose, we've seen and um, with even electric vehicle engineering how successful it has been now yeah. um, since yeah. it was introduced last June. So there is definitely an appetite in the and space of renewables and yeah, energy. Yeah, I have here a, a report hot off the photocopier, basically. <laughs> Skills for zero carbon, the demand for renewable energy, retrofit, residential retrofit and electrical vehicle uh, deployment skills to 2030. Wow. So that's what are really badly needed is people with retrofitting skills and people with renewable energies, uh, building services, design skills. And they're just not not out there, if you know what I mean. Yeah, in terms of it, we're going to bring um, Anthony back on. There's a few questions in, so we're just going to try and get through as many as we can. Um, this question has come in, I suppose, in relation to construction management, Anthony, and it says, will this program have you out on sites or is it more kind of a professional role in, in terms of construction management? Um, it's, you know, like you said, there's a work placement there to, to get out on site to see um, that thing and there is site visits um, throughout the years um, as you go through it there but it, it really focuses on both I suppose you're you're looking at all aspects and uh, you know that's part of the uh, the charm of it too is there's you know there's architects and civil engineers also and lecture in the course like so it's not just one perspective you're getting it's from all sorts so there's really an element of you know learning how to manage a project how to do your day-to-days mm -hmm. within a project no matter what your role um, but also you know getting that that element of uh, site experience as well um, and thanks, Anthony. Another question that will come in. Um, so, what are the points likely to be in the new construction course, level seven? And have you got a crystal ball? <laughs> well, I suppose um, the points typically for our level sevens are not high. Fiona, sure they're not. Um, You're in the I, round I that's kind of two hundred, two twenty five space. Yeah. I forget that this is the first time that the common entry is on the on the CEO because actually we've put the two classes together this year. So we're sort of thinking, but sure, that's already running, you know, but of course it hasn't been on the CEO because we find it's working very well that, mm. you know, some people are on the architectural program, some are on the construction management, but they're both actually being taught together for this year. And then at the end of the year, they can decide mm. to stick with their original choice or cross over if they wanted to and next year we'll have people that come in on both honors programs or come in on the level seven with the open option of uh, crossing discipline if they want to okay so another we'll question wait, come and in. Yeah. wait and see another question come in yeah. is about can you is there crossover say if you decided you didn't um want to be in one of the programs such as construction is there an ability to move across to any other program areas well, I suppose it can be a bit difficult. Um, I suppose, you know, like there's at least one or two modules that are distinct to that program because it gives people um, an, a, a contact or basically it, it gets them to buy into their course, you know, and their discipline mm -hmm. early on. So we'd, we don't have them all doing the same thing. But if there's a lot of commonality, um, you can potentially cross over but sometimes it can be difficult you know yeah that's why we're on the trying modules. to the common entry to construction or maybe in the future a common entry to engineering yeah and that's the thing now i suppose we're finding more and more even in the schools context that mm -hmm. that kind of common entry approach in the first year while a student is finding their 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 feet and their interests are um are, are very successful um last question for you um and i'm going to put it out in terms of I suppose career opportunities and fire safety engineering and you have touched on this and but what are the jobs for fire safety engineer well i suppose um I suppose typically the students who graduate from the B Eng in particular are looking for jobs as fire engineers as des and designers, right? So there are mm -hmm. big consultancy companies, fire safety engineering consultancy companies. They might be based in Dublin, but they have, as we mentioned, they might have a small office here in Donegal or in Derry or whatever, right? So basically 
you're in charge of the fire safety design of a building, maybe before it's built, maybe after it's built, maybe checking and so on. That's one aspect to go down the design or the engineering route. Another aspect would be to work, say, um, in an architectural or construction company, because what you find is most architectural companies now would like to have a fire safety engineer in their midst so that one person in the company can look after all of the fire safety mm -hmm. engineering aspects. So when a building goes to planning that the fire um, fire safety certificates and reports are all done um, yeah, for planning. Aligned. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's a, a, as much as we can get through tonight because we could be here all evening. But um, in terms of, I suppose, uh, myself, I want to thank you both, Anthony and Anne, for joining us this evening. And for anybody who's looking for more information, if you want to visit um, the Department of Civil Engineering and Construction or you want to have that one-to-one -one tour and talk and uh, walk through the campus, feel free to go to lyit.ie and click on Campus Tours and book your slot to visit us over the coming months, February, March. March and April before you come to us there in September. Um, our next um, Facebook Live is going to be uh, with the Department of Nursing and Healthcare and we're going to be joined by Dr Louise McBride, um, Head of Nursing and Healthcare, focusing on general nursing, psychiatric nursing and intellectual disability nursing. But for now, thanks so much for joining us and we hope you enjoyed tonight's session.